بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين. This is our fifth program on uh, grand jury and uh, before we go into the talk, I just want to say a few things about uh, uh, a few things about a few things. <laughs> First of all, whatever is going on, Allah got us here, this place, and at this time, under these conditions. It, uh, it may be a process of uh, revolution or evolution, but it's coming at a time of uh, transition, internal transition and external transition. What I mean to say is the world is changing right in front of our eyes. The war against Islam is open and clear. The sides are also clear. You have the anti-Islamic forces on one side, wearing Islamic clothing, wearing Islamic names, uh, performing Salat, all of that. We have that. We have that today. We have had it. We have on the other side, imperfect people who are basically trying to do the right thing and they have themselves and they have their dean and they have their families and they have all of these things working at this time. Therefore, whatever is going on in the world Allah got us here at this time. I mean, that's true no matter how. Allah got us here, but this process of evolution. For instance, the things that we're going to talk about tonight, if they would have happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they would have had a different flavor. When we were challenged 30 years ago in the masjid in Oakland. We just stripped down an iron bar that had, you know, the dumbbells that had, mm -hmm. and we went to town on wearing the people out, you know, because that's the stage we was in. Uh, the things that happened in Oakland, uh, have not affected us in that way this time a lot. In fact, there's a lot of things, you know. In Oakland, there's probably no African-American imam that I have seen that have done 15 years of celibacy. You know, 15 years, that means he went 15 years without, you know, any human relations, simple as that. Okay, uh, well, let's say it clearly, without sexual relations, all the relations was human, uh, laughing, talking, walking down. Oakland is not, uh, first of all, they didn't believe it, because they didn't believe that nobody, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, they watched and listened and they, they was on that, because first of all, they didn't believe what they were seeing that somebody would just carefree go about their business, running in the hills, praying, fasting, and doing all those things, and not concerned about the things that they were concerned. Oakland is a concern, or it was a concern, material, boyfriend, girlfriend type of community. That was their whole, that was their style. I mean, they, I used to tell everybody, I said, we don't do that stuff in D.C. We don't have all of this. Uh, I mean, when I would come to Oakland, it was always some either arranged counseling or something. And uh, the people just didn't appear to have it that well together or be working together that well. Maybe they was pretending. Then, 
if it was private counseling with a sister or something, sometimes they would say at the end of the talk, well, what's going to happen to me? And I'd be looking like, that. hell, I don't know what's going to happen to you. Uh, I'm just here counseling. I'm not here looking for no, uh, you know what I mean, matrimony. That would seem like it was always the case. So this period of uh, evolution, uh, I want to talk for a minute about some of the things that, that, that we know about making do for our brothers and what have you, and asking a lot to guide them. That's the part of you always say, make do for me. You know, but one, the time, one time Umar got permission from the Prophet, peace be upon him, to go to Umrah. And he said, uh, when you go, he said, make dua for me. And Umar was so happy with that statement. It's a common statement, but that it was like, he said that it was like it was better than anything in the world. That the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asking him, when you go to Umrah, make dua for me. When you're traveling, it's always a thing of uh, dua. The, the traveler's dua, when you're traveling, you're closer to Allah than uh, the normal day-to-day -day person. So they'll always tell a traveler, make dua. Uh, the person say, I tell them, I say dua, make dua for me. And uh, it's the same thing in Arabic, make dua for me, brother. And so we've been going through some various stages and transitions. We're very thankful to Allah. Now, a few things that we're going to say is like, for instance, one of the good things about this evolution, revolutionary process is it it put everything out front. It asked a lot of questions. You know, it, it put out, the first thing that happened was challenges. You're this, and you're that, you do this, you do that. That was the first thing that came out of uh, the people that we make dua for out of their mouths. All of it was clear provocation. Everything from then up to now, because see, still, we get phone calls, except now, the phone calls are a little different. Some of them come from their original, from their number. Mm. You know, still they'll use uh, no caller ID, but when they're in a hurry, they'll uh, just hit now. So it has a line back to them. So would uh, if you get the police involved, the no caller ID, it'll pop up who's calling you. You know what I mean? It ain't no hidden thing when you the, you know, boss man's involved. He ain't got no, we don't know who it is. Everybody knows that. Maybe between me and you is no call ID, but boss man, them computers is glitching out, clicking out, and you even say anything uh, for the last 30, 40 years, you even say anything like Ayatollah, this or that, that boy clicks on the computer, on the tape, and you was a worldwide sensation, just like that. But if you think back a while back, uh, we had things like uh, when Isna would have a program here, we would have a hosting. You remember that? We would have breakfast for everybody. The same breakfast we would have for Ramadan, I mean for Ramadan and for Eid and all that, we have that here. Now if you remember, we had rides for everybody if you want to go to see the such and such and such. If you want to break from the humdrum stuff down there, we had it set up, you come here and you go get a tour around the city. You know what I mean, we already know where they are. We had a couple of vans ready and we could take people around. Now we made that available. People did not take us up on it. But we made it available for people. Okay, that's the way we view 
then and we view it now. We just, there's no necessity for it now. The hosting. The hosting leads back to the same thing we do, have done for decades with Ramadan, with Eid, and all of that. Okay, now if, if you add up what all of this costs, like, uh, now from our piracy we get enough money to cover those things, but if we wasn't doing piracy, the money we get right uh, here, it wouldn't cover anything close to those. Uh, the food that we have during the week, that's technically uh, we'll be back to it soon, but it, it, it there's no r real price on it. It's like, well, whatever you got. And if people get in line, I ain't got no, that's the shoot, you get in line too. Yeah. In fact, uh, there's no, you just get in line, and if you want to put something in here, put some, this is a service. It's a service. Okay, I'm saying that to say we got a certain way we've been doing things. And no one likes to talk in Islam about themselves. Uh, but these attacks are personal. So we're putting out our defense beforehand. So what we're saying is there is absolutely none, no credibility with what our opponents are saying there's nothing. Now, if I'm if I miss say anything, everybody cut right in right away and say, "Oh no, man, that ain't the way it is." You know, especially some people been here 25, 30. You've been here almost 30 years. Huh? 28, 20, 92. 92. Yeah, that's uh, 28. That's 27. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. You get time to. to you, that's enough time to see the trends. Definitely. All the trends. The government filling up the masjid and emptying it out. That's during your time. That's probably happened at least three or four times. But people coming in, filling up, and then they gone. That's no problem for us because we've been used to it all along and we've planned for it. But what we're talking about now is specific accusations made. Okay, so first accusation is about money. Using up money. There's nothing in our history, nothing in our past that would give that any credibility. It just none. It just because we're always uh, technically. I don't really want to say it, but I have to. We're giving all the time, and that giving seems to make us feel better than the people is always taking. Because the people are always taking it. That I don't know. If they don't seem to be grinning all the time. They're not, uh, you know, turning flips or nothing. You know, so uh, first thing, there's some way, some people are made certain ways. And Islam enhances whatever that, those characteristics. So what I'm saying is this, is that everything that we have been uh, involved in here, uh, in D.C. and in Oakland, is all the same. And none of those charges that the people make, number one, they don't make sense. They don't make sense at all. Now, I'm just saying this. If they make sense to anybody, please say they make sense. No, really, just say, hey, no, man, they make sense out there, you know. Uh, they're not coordinated. They don't balance each other off. So they don't make sense, they're not coordinated, they don't balance each other off, and they're inconsistent. And worse than that, they just don't make sense. You can't kill all the brothers and all the brothers like you. The ones that survived, they all can't wait to 
you know, it's just ridiculous. So that means that stuff was never meant to stick like that. It was meant to provoke us, to make us mad, because you would think, what? You calling me a snitch and that's what you're doing? All you're doing is snitching and you calling me a snitch. And they can do anything that they want to us and then say, how dare you say we're doing this and we're doing that, like they would say uh, about uh, suspicion is, you know, you know, the Quran says that suspicion, yeah, but suspicion, yeah, that's suspicion for no reason suspicion, for no reason suspicion, not like uh, they do everything to cause suspicion and then say you ain't supposed to be sus suspicious, you know what I mean? They do everything. They don't leave no rock unturned, slimy rock that somebody crawls out from under. They will batter you time after time, repetitively, and then say, you can't be suspicious of us. A lot of them look like suspicion. Well, they've got a total misreading of Quran and Hadith. That's unfounded suspicion. Even one guy came and he, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the wives, especially Aisha, that guy is there is not any good. That's what he said about the guy. Because it's his duty to point out people that ain't no good. But when he got there, when he uh, came in front